How many mathematicians does it take to wrap up a package? None. You just need a chord. And we will be using segment relationships like chords, tangents, and secants today. We're not really, we're going to use some angles, but we're not really looking at angles. We're going to be looking at lengths of segments. So here in your first part of your notes, I want you to mark the uh, congruent angles. And we should justify that. So for example, here I have arc AD. Well, that corresponds to ACD and ABD, or if you just want to call it angle C and angle B. So those two, since they intercept the same arc, they are both half of that arc measure. They're both inscribed angles, so they must be congruent. So the reason is they intercept the same arcs. Now I can do the same thing for angle A and angle D on this side. They intercept the same arc, so they are congruent. They're both inscribed angles. Now, why can I say that triangle AEC is, congru is not congruent, but similar to triangle DEB? Well, you can see I have angle-angle similarity. And if I wanted to, I actually have that third angle, that vertical angle. But I only need to say two angles, cause be because for triangles, once you know two, you know the third. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and set up a proportion using the similar triangles that we did at the beginning of January. So AE is to CE, so AE is green, and there's AE is going to be like ED on this triangle. How do I know that? I have the blue angle to the yellow angle is the same or similar to the blue angle to the yellow angle. And then I want to look at CE, which is going to go to uh, this piece right here, because here it's the red to the yellow and the red to the yellow. So on the bottom, I'm going to put EB. Now, if I cross multiply these, so AE times EB equals, don't forget your equals, CE times ED. What that means is that AE, this green times the purple, is the same as that purple times that green. So the pieces are this, uh, the product of the pieces will be the same. So the chord chord product theorem is if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the products of the lengths of the segments of the chords are equal. So AE times EB is the same as CE times ED. And we'll take a quick look at an interactive circle where we can play with different chords and see what those products look like. Now here's a nice little applet I found on GeoGebra 2 and it lets you adjust the chords on the circle so you can experiment and look at the product of their lengths and compare it to the product of the other two segments. So here you can see 2.7 to 3, 2.7 to 2.73 to 3, and then they have the product here. Uh, there is some rounding going on, so if you like look with a really close eye, you'll go, wait a second. But the general idea is here that this blue times that blue it's going to give you the same product as this green times that pink. And you can see it on the screen. This product is staying the same as that product. Now, in this example, I want to find the radius of the circle. So I'm actually, you might be tempted to say, well, I could do Pythagorean theorem and find that piece. But that's not really what I'm trying to do. I want to find the radius. Now, if I could find this piece here, I could find the diameter. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use the chord chord product theorem. 5 times x equals 9 times 9. Then I uh, go ahead and multiply, divide both sides by 5, and I find that x is 16.2. So this is 16.2, which means the diameter is 5 plus the 16.2, or 21.2. The radius is half that, or 10.6. So what we did in this problem is we used the chord chord product theorem. 9 times 9 is the same as 5 times x. Solved for x. Since we knew the whole diameter, we were able to find the radius. Now we're going to look at secant secant segments. So before we were inside the circle, now we're moving completely outside of the circle. Well, first of all, you can see I added these two dotted lines. They won't normally be there in your examples, but it helps me to use triangles to figure out what kind of relationship I'm going to have. Well, again, using the arc 
that's intercepted, I can tell that these two angles will be congruent, angle A and angle C. I also know that, and, and I've also redrawn it here, I've separated the two triangles because it's easier to look at their similarity this way. So angle A and angle C is congruent because they intercept the same arcs. And angle E is congruent to itself by the reflexive property of congruence. Since I have two angles that are congruent, I can say they're similar. A, E, D, so red to blue to no marking, is red to blue to no marking, C, E, B. And that is by angle-angle similarity. Now I'm going to do a proportion with A, E, and D, E. Well, A, E is connecting the one congruence to the two congruent mark. So that would be like C, E here. So I put C, E on top. D, E is the no mark to two congruence marks. So that's like B, E. And I put that on bottom. I can cross multiply that and I get AE times BE equals CE times DE. Now what does that mean? So I'm going to take a quick look at it all together. AE times BE we said was CE times DE. Well AE is the whole and BE is the outside segment. CE is the whole and DE is the outside segment. So that gives us the secant secant product theorem. If two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the whole times the outside equals the whole times the outside. This is for lengths, not angles. Let's go ahead and explore this a little bit more with this applet. Here's an app I created to look at the secant secant product theorem. Now the main tricky part with this theorem is doing the whole times the external. So you have to add the 5.6 to the 4.1 to get the 9.73. Notice this doesn't say 5.59 here. It is the sum of the two segments. And then it multiplies that number times the external. And I'm getting about 40 there. Same thing here, 6.07 and 4. When it multiplies all that, you can see that the product is exactly the same. Even if I were to move these points a little bit, so let's say I moved point C so it came down and I made point A really short, even as I adjust those, sure the product changes, but the, this product compared to that product, they are still equal, all right? So the 6.27 times 5.01 is about 31.44. And the same here for the 9.4 plus 2.62, which is 12 roughly, times 2.62, and you'll get 31.44. So no matter where my points are on this, my product will be the same. It might change for as I move the points, but the product for the one secant is the same as the product for the other secant. Now in this example, again, remember the most important part is to find the whole. So go 10 plus 6, that's 16. And I'm going to find the whole down here. Since I don't know x, it's just going to be x plus 5. Um, if x was 4, you would have added 5 to get 9, right? So whatever x is, plus 5. And we're going to use that in our uh, product. So we do the whole times the outside, 16 times 6 equals the whole x plus 5 times 5. Now I'm going to rearrange it a little bit here because it's easier to see the 5 in front of the x plus 5. Okay, Then I'll multiply out on the left which gives me 96 and here I'm going to distribute 5x plus 25. Subtract 25 from both sides and I get 71 equals 5x divide by 5 and I get x is 14.2. So if I was just looking for x, you would be done. But they asked for wt, so I have to add the 14.2 to the 5, and that gives me 19.2. Again, the main thing is to do whole, don't forget to add them, times the outside, equals the whole times the outside. Now in our last theorem, we're looking at angles, uh, segments created by secants and tangents. So the first thing is, I know that angle BAD is congruent to another angle here. Well, how do I know this? 
A uh, BAD is half of this arc, whatever it is. Well, so is BDC. So BAD is half of this arc, so is this angle. It's half of this arc. If I ignore that line there, you see that right there? Okay. So BAD is absolutely congruent to BDC it's because they intercept the same arc. And they're both uh, like inscribed angles that behave the same way. Now I'm going to mark my congruent angles. I'm taking these triangles. So I'm taking this little outside triangle and the giant triangle. And I'm going to look at the angles on those. So we already know that those two, BDC and CAD, are congruent, or BAD if you wanted to call it that. Well, and I also know that angle C is congruent to itself by reflexive property of congruence, which means that triangle CBD, two marks to no marks to one mark, is going to be congruent to CDA, two marks to no marks to one mark, or blue to blank to red, blue to blank to red, CDA. Now I can set up a proportion to, uh, because they're similar, and I can say CB is to CD. So let me mark CB here and CD. Well, CB is the two mark to no mark. So that would be like CD on the bottom here, which I have coming up. And CD here is the blue mark to the red mark. So blue mark to red mark, blue mark to red mark. See how they match. Um, blue mark to no mark, blue mark to no mark. Those match. So CB up here goes with CD. CD down up here goes with CA. Now I'll cross multiply. CB times CA is the same as CD times CD, which leads us to the secant tangent product theorem. Is if a secant and a tangent intersect in the exterior of the circle, then the whole times the outs uh, the whole times the outside is equal to the tangent squared. Uh, if you're on your notes, it might say CB times CA. Make sure it's the whole times the outside. That's the main thing. On your math chart, it's fine. So we'll go ahead and play with some of these and see if this holds for other examples. Now let's play with the secant and tangent product theorem. So here's an applet. Again, just like the secant secant, the main thing is to remember to add these two segments, the 9 and the 3. That gives you 12. And then you multiply that whole segment times the external, which is 3. Now with the tangent, the whole segment is outside. So when you do the whole times the outside, it's just the tangent squared. So I could have really used the secant secant uh, product theorem, and it would have worked just fine. So let's take a look at these products as they change. Naturally, as I make the segment shorter or longer, the products are going to change a little. All right, so you can see there's 3761, 3761, and actually, I think I have to make this tangent a little bit longer before I can change the product. And you can see now the products changed because the tangent changed. And as I move this point along, the products between the two are staying the same. So the whole times the outside is equal to the tangent squared. Now in this example, I'm going to find Kn. So again, the main thing is find the whole. It's 18, 10 plus 8. So 18 times 8 is x times x, or x squared. Multiply now, I get 144 is x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and I get 12 is x. And that is kn. That's the length right there. So these are actually pretty straightforward, especially uh, since we'll be having, most of the time you won't have uh, an x that's being a crazy multiplication with distributive property. Okay, so finally a reflection for today's lesson. Will the triangles created by intersecting chords always sometimes or never be congruent and why? Well, they'll always be similar, but congruent means that their lengths have to be the same. You could see when I moved the chords, those weren't necessarily the same size triangles, but sometimes they can be. So sometimes is the answer. When one chord is perpendicular to another chord in the circle, what can we tell about one of the chords? This is a really cool question. Remember that when one chord is perpendicular to another chord in the circle, well, I should be careful. It needs to bisect it, so add that to this question. 
If one chord is perpendicular and it bisects it, then we can argue that it is a diameter. Why is a distributive property important when using the secant secant product theorem? Well, if there's an x and you're doing a whole, you could have x plus 3 times 3. So you have to distribute that 3 onto the x plus 3. So you'll see a lot of the distributive property on this theorem. Don't forget to put a parenthesis around the whole and distribute whatever is multiplying that. The secant tangent product theorem is a geometric mean. I don't know if you noticed that. Where did we first learn of the geometric mean? You might remember when we did altitudes on similar right triangles, so we took a right triangle, dropped an altitude. It gave us the same kind of relationship that we're seeing. And that is the geometric mean, where the product of two numbers equals the square of another. Finally, how do we use similarity to establish the relationship between segments created by chords, secants, and tangents? Well, first of all, we looked at all the angles to establish which triangles were similar. Then once we did that, we created proportions using the segments in those triangles, and those gave us the product theorems.